Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Universalist Church in which love is the spirit. We are glad you're here, here in the sanctuary or anywhere in the world, especially those of you visiting or returning after a time away. I am not Nancy Jeanette, even though it says I am in your order of service. Um, I am actually the Reverend Dr. Adam Robersmith, but please, just Reverend Adam is fine. Um, I'm the senior minister here. If you're a visitor, I hope that you'll speak with our welcome team or visit our webpage. It's www.westhartfordu.org to learn more about us. Our guest book or our online contact page will help you get onto our electronic mailing list. And our electronic communications are our best way of staying in contact with you. We look forward to helping you become part of the Universalist Church no matter where you are. And though we are in the season of colds, flu, and COVID, now the numbers are finally dropping again. I was very satisfied to see them under 7% recently. So, that said, masks are always welcome here. And we do encourage everyone to stay up to date with their vaccinations. If you would like a mask, our uh, ushers have some that we are happy to share. I have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, the very first thing is that I'm hoping that you all have read the uh, letter that went out by email on Thursday, uh, letting you know that I will be going on sabbatical from August 1st through January 31st. I've been here, this is my sixth year here, um, which just blows my mind. I don't know how it's been six. I mean, I realize that three of them have been kind of oddly compacted, um, but part of, uh, part of what it is to be a UU minister is that for every year of service, you earn a month of sabbatical time. And so if we don't start me using it soon, before long, I'm going to have to disappear for a year, and that's no good. So we're going to give me a six-month sabbatical uh, starting this August 1st. And the important part of all of that, and the reason why Diane is standing there, is because our frequent guest preacher, Diane Daniels, is going to also be our sabbatical minister while I am away. So I would like to welcome Diane and thank her very, very much for her willingness to step in. Um, she will be with us half time during that time. And so some of the tasks of our ministry will spread around amongst our other uh, staff as well. We'll be telling you more about all of that as we get closer and closer and as things get decided. Um, but I'm just, I'm thrilled to have Diane stepping into our pul pulpit during that time. I'm also needing to let you know that we have our assessment workshops happening. Um, we've already had one, our Zoom session happened. We have two more coming up. Um, the signups are on the board behind the sanctuary, um, and we need to hear from you. It's important that all of us, me, you, the staff, the board, everybody takes a look at who we are, who we're becoming, how we're living up to our 2020 vision statement, and where there are things that we need to shift what we're doing or think a little differently, or where we can celebrate that we've been doing a fantastic job. We want to know all of that information. I want to know all of that information. Without knowing that, it's hard to make sure that we continue on in the right way forward. So if you would please sign up for one of those sessions, figure out how to make sure that your contribution, um, your awareness of who we are and what we're becoming gets shared with the assessment committee, I would be super, super grateful. Thank you. After worship, we'll have our fellowship time in a Fisk Hall and through Zoom. If you need help finding your way into Fisk Hall for our fellowship hour, any member of the church will be happy to guide you there. Just look for someone wearing a Universalist Church name tag. That's always helpful. You can find the link for Zoom in your weekly news or the calendar on Breeze. And if you're not getting the weekly news, please do sign up for it on our website. And now, I invite you to take a moment to make your mobile phones silent, no matter how many of them you happen to have. <laughs> Turn off your email, put away your keyboards if you're at home, and settle in for worship.
Good morning, everyone. Our call to worship this morning was written by Reverend Gretchen Haley, and it's entitled, Know Only That You Are Loved. For this one moment, know only that you are loved, that you are safe and whole and loved. Know that you belong here, among us, here upon this earth, in your body, however tired or how broken your heart may be. Whatever fear, disappointment, or anger you carry for this hour, know that you are not alone. Feel the presence of others beside you. Feel the presence surrounding you, breathing beside you and with you, discovering the way our voices rise and fall together in harmony, in hope. Claim here a resilient freedom, the choice for love, for light, to live with joy and gratitude and praise as a form of resistance. Already, we are organizing. Come, let us worship together. And now in the time is in the service where I'm going to light the chalice. So all y'all that know the words of prayer, please keep a prayer up for me. Sometimes me and this chalice don't exactly get along. But, we're, we're going to affirm that everything's going to be all right this morning. I'm so glad y'all are giggling. I like that. Okay, you. Not quite. Keep that thought. Keep that thought. You see it? Okay, I'm gonna trust you. Cause I'm not seeing it, but I'm gonna trust that it really is there. Sometimes you just have to go on faith. Our chalice lighting this morning was written by the Reverend Scott Taylor. He's one of my favorites as a colleague. And it's entitled, The Names of Love. We light this chalice in the names of love. The love of family that brings us into being, allows us to bloom, and then sends us on our way with courage, knowing we can return no matter what. The love of partnered hearts that teaches us to trust and help us know that who we are does not end at the barrier of our own skin. The love of friends who help us feel seen and who sing our song back to us when we cannot hear it with our ears alone. The love of community that bathes us in belonging and calls us to see the needs of others as our own. And the greatest love, the love that will not let us go even in our fear, even in our failure, even when we are lonely or lost. Love invites us home. If we listen, it is doing so, even today. Our opening hymn is in the gray hymnal at number 95. There is more love somewhere. Those of you at home, if you have the hymnal or you know the song, please feel free to sing along.
everyone, please join me in speaking the words of our affirmation, our covenant, as printed in the order of service. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I couldn't quite have this be dark because the first line of what I'm about to say would, well, it just wouldn't fit. <clears throat> this comes from a story written by Matt de la Pena, um, and Reverend Daniels brought this story to my attention and I want to share it with you. In the beginning, there is light and two wide-eyed figures standing near the foot of your bed and the sound of their voices is love. A cab driver plays love softly on his radio while you're bouncing back with the bumps of the city and everything smells anew and it smells like life. Love too is the smell of a crashing wave and the train whistling blindly in the distance and each night the sky above your trailer turns the color of love. In a crowded concrete park, you toddle towards summer sprinklers while older kids skip rope and run up the slide and soon you are running among them and the echo of your laughter is love. On the night the fire alarm blares, you are pulled from sleep and whisked into the street where a quiet old lady is pointing to the sky. Stars shine long after they flame out, she tells you. And the shine they shine with is love. You wake with a start in the arms of a loved one who bends to your ear and whispers, it's okay, it's okay, it's love. And in time you learn to recognize a love overlooked, a love that wakes at dawn and rides to work on the bus, a slice of burnt toast that tastes like love. And it's love in each deep crease of your grandfather's face as he lowers himself onto an overturned bucket to fish. And it's love in the rustling leaves of gnarled trees lined behind the flower fields. And it's love in the made-up stories that your uncles tell you in the backyard between wild horseshoe throws. And the man in rags outside the subway station plays love notes that lift into the sky like tiny beacons of light. And the face staring back in the bathroom mirror, this too is love. So when the time comes for you to set off on your own, heavy winds will sweep past your building and gray clouds will congregate above. Your loved ones will stand there like puddles beneath umbrellas holding you tight and kissing you and wishing you, sorry, wishing you luck. But it won't be luck you'll leave with because you'll have love. You'll have love, love, love.
the voluntary offering, the sharing of our resources for our shared work as a religious community is a spiritual practice for us. By offering your time, talent, and treasure to this community, you help serve the members, friends, and wider community of this congregation. As part of that service, we share our general offering each week with organizations that do work in the world that brings us ever closer to creating the beloved community. This month, we'll be sharing our offering with Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism, also known as Blue. Blue was founded in 2015 at the Movement for Black Lives convening in Cleveland, Ohio. The dozen or so black UUs in attendance imagined a cohesive, national, vibrant community of black Unitarian Universalists. Blue evolved from several conversations among black UUs at that gathering. Blue is committed to expanding the power and capacity of black UUs within Unitarian Universalism, providing support, information, and resources for black Unitarian Universalists, and justice-making and liberation for black people throughout our faith. To give electronically, please use the QR code on your order of service, the links in the description, or those on our website to make your donation to our offering. Here in the sanctuary, our offering will now be gratefully received. generosity. I'm going to share with you two readings now. The first was written by the Reverend Heather Christensen, and it's entitled Individually and Together. Unitarian Universalism is a grand vision of a world filled with peace and justice, love and joy. That vision is embodied in a few large congregations, numerous mid-sized congregations, and many, many small congregations. No matter its size, every congregation depends on each of its members, each and every one of you. Each of you, by your commitment of time, energy, and resources, help to make that grand vision real. Indiv excuse me, individually and together, 
We are Unitarian Universalists, building a world filled with peace and justice, love and joy. And now I've got one more reading I want to share with you. This one from Mother Teresa. It's at number 562 in the hymnal. If you'd like to read along with me, I'll give you a second or two to get to that. And it's entitled, A Lifelong Sharing. Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. Love has to be put into action, and that action is service. Whatever form we are, able or disabled, rich or poor, it is not how much we do, but how much love we put into the doing, a lifelong sharing of love with others. Please join me now in singing the doxology, which is in your order of service, I do believe. Yes, it is. seated. Thank you, everyone. Our, I'm calling it the pastoral prayer this morning. It's entitled, Let Us Look First to the Response of Love. And it was written by the Reverend Maureen Killeran. In these hard times, let us look first to the response of love. In the midst of challenge, may our chalice flame bear witness to the inherent worth and dignity of every human being. In the midst of uncertainty, may our chalice be a beacon of encouragement that our values may guide our choices. Let us look first at the response of love. Though it may not always be easy to do that, to look first to the response of love, when we do, may all the love that's in our hearts be available to share with those willing to receive it. When challenges come, as they are certain to do, may the love that sustains us burn even brighter, letting those around us clearly see that our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of every human being shines through our eyes, manifests in our words, and flows from the supporting touch of our hands. When positive outcomes are not 100% certain, may the love we carry swell up and overflow with encouragement to all who need it, including ourselves. And may that flow continue to come as our Unitarian Universalist values make themselves known in the choices we make and in the actions we perform. May our first response be one of love, supported by strength and swelling with generosity. Please join me now as we sing Spirit of Life, number 123 in the Gray Hymnal.
Our reading today is The House That Love Made by the Reverend Amanda Poppy, amended by Diane. This beautiful sanctuary, this house of worship, is the home that love made. It is full of the love that the founders felt when they planned out these walls and raised the beams above us. This is the home that love made. It is full of the love of all who have worshipped here. Those who have celebrated and grieved here. The babies dedicated, couples married, and family members mourned here. This is the home that love made. It is full of the love of our children, past, present, and future, as they learn to laugh together. And it is the home of our youth as they grow and mature into their own sense of purpose and meaning. This is the home that love made. It is full of the love of the staff who have served it, full of their hopes for this congregation, their hard work, and their acts of dedication. This is the home that love made. It is full of the love of the choir and the musicians, our consistent and faithful team, the guest musicians who grace us with their skill and passion, and the love made so clear in your voices that are lifted here on Sunday morning. This is the home that love made. It is full of our love, the love of this community, despite differences, disagreements, the love that holds us together as a people with common principles and unique perspectives. This is the beloved and blessed home that love in all its many shapes, forms, voices, and actions made. Can you feel it? I can feel it. May this love be with us always. Amen. Our musical message today is actually a hymn, and we are all going to sing together. So I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing together hymn number 128 in the Gray Hymnal. Number 128.
please be comfortable in your seats. My sermon title this morning is Love is the Key, Keeping Your Heart Centered. James Baldwin said that love takes off the masks that we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. I use the word love here not merely in the personal sense, but as a state of being or state of grace, not in the infantile American sense of being made happy, but in the tough and universal sense of quest and daring and growth. Mr. Baldwin speaks of the kind of love that his forebears, mine, and perhaps some of yours exhibited the kind that made them go to work every single day in conditions we might not have survived, doing jobs we would not want to do for pay that was substandard at best to keep body, soul, and their families together. I'm speaking of working class and not quite working class families that spent far more of their income to secure housing, utilities, and food than might be considered ideal, even for a time when prices weren't as high, comparatively speaking, as what we deal with now. If your family was more well-to-do, perhaps worrying a little bit less about making ends meet, they had their own struggles. No mistake there. To achieve a certain social and economic status means you can't stop working, stop achieving, or stop being concerned about staying there. To be comfortable, knowing your family was housed, fed, and clothed, that took a certain amount of effort. And if your family's comfort depended on the income of a single wage earner, that comfort came at a price. What was it that drove our parents, our grandparents and ancestors to do what they did? I believe that what drove them was love. Love for their children, their descendants, even if they might not ever meet them, and for their predecessors. They held on, kept pushing forward, and worked consistently to make a better life for themselves because they centered love in their hearts. I've modified this part of my message to include some very wise words from Adrienne Marie Brown. Love leads us to observe in a much deeper way than any other emotion. If love were the central practice of a new generation of individual people, spiritual leaders and heads of household, it would have a massive impact. If the goal were to increase love and keep your heart centered on love rather than winning or on dominating a constant opponent, I think we could begin to manifest liberation from constant oppression of any type. With our hearts centered on love, we would suddenly see everything we do, everyone we meet, not through the tactical eyes of war and conquest or through suspicious eyes wary of someone wanting what we have, but instead through eyes of love. We would see there's no such thing as a blank canvas, an empty land, or a new idea, but everywhere there are complex, ancient, fertile grounds full of potential. We would understand that the strength of our Unitarian Universalist movement is in the strength of relationships, the strength of love, which can only be measured by its depth. Scaling up would mean going deeper, being more vulnerable and more empathetic. When you aspire to be centered as a perfectly imperfect human being, it means that you treat others with dignity and respect and empower them to reach their own personal goals. That sounds like someone who has taken our first UU principle to heart, that everyone has inherent worth and dignity and that we treat them that way. When you add a modifier, desiring to be spiritually centered, 
It adds a dedication to five important principles. Love, peace, truth, strength, and joy. Take another step. Be heart-centered. What does that mean? It means that you're aware of and live into your values and what you desire in life. You make intentional choices throughout your life that honor your needs, your values, and your beliefs. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not an easy way to live. Our busy, noisy, complicated world can make it really difficult. And when you keep your heart centered on what's important to you, what makes your foundation strong and your life rewarding, you'll find it's a very satisfying way to live. Centering your heart means you're not just thinking about and dreaming of a life that holds your principles as important, as nice things to have and do. It means that your principles drive you. They are your motivation, your driving force. Love becomes, in the words of my colleague Roddy Biggs, a love that we cannot just name, but one that we must embody. A love that we must make known not just by our words, but by our actions. Lest you think that I'm suggesting that your love must, right now, right this minute, encompass the entire world and everything and everyone in it, take a breath. Let me reassure you, when we consistently and intentionally center love in our hearts, it can indeed reach around the world and positively affect everyone. But here's a little easier assignment. Let's start locally, within the reach of our hands and our hearts. Let's begin by expressing love for the people in our immediate circle, our friends and family who occasionally may make it hard to remember how much we love them. And yet, we must persist. You can also express love and keep love for yourself centered in your heart during this month of love. We're reminded often that we're not supposed to love ourselves too much. Yeah, I use the air quotes. You can tell how I'm feeling about that too much stuff. <laughs> and we're given examples of people who seem to love themselves above and beyond all others. I instead believe that a healthy sense of self-love means you show appreciation for yourself, growing out of the actions that support your physical growth. The workouts and activities that you make time for because they make your body feel good. You build strength and flexibility. You take care of your skin by eating good food, drinking plenty of water, and if you're like me and have to take any kind of medicine on a regular basis, you do that consistently so you can reap the benefits. A healthy sense of self-love means you support your psychological growth and you feed your mind with books and conversations and media that occasionally will challenge you, that reinforce your learning and remind you of what you've already done and accomplished. You've done a lot and you have justifiably should be proud of that. My journaling practice helps me to do that. I often reread my journal entries from the past and I'm surprised and pleased by how much I've learned and shared and stored. On the advice of a motivational speaker I listened to years ago, I turned my car into a rolling university. <laughs> Whenever I'm driving, I have something positive playing. Music, an audio book, or maybe a TED talk. And I love hearing the different perspectives of people who have information that I don't have. A healthy sense of self-love also means that you pay attention to your spiritual growth. The services here at Fern Street help you to do that. And you can amplify and extend those benefits by adding to your spiritual toolkit. When something is said from the pulpit that intrigues you, Take a few minutes in the next day or two to get more information. How can you incorporate that new idea 
or new fact into your personal spiritual path? Will something said during the time for all ages help you to see love in a different way? Could my mention of my family and the examples they set for me help you remember your own family inspirations and what they taught you? Self-love means that you take care of your own needs and that you don't sacrifice your well-being to please others so often that you wind up depleted and worn out. Center your hearts, beloved, and remember to include yourself in that centering. Bell Hooks reminds us, one of the best guides about how to be self-loving is to give ourselves the love we are often dreaming about receiving from others. There was a time when I felt lousy about my over 40 body. I saw myself as too fat, too this or too that. Yet I fantasized about finding a lover who would give me the gift of being loved as I am. Bell Hooks plays no games. It is silly, isn't it, that I would dream of someone else offering to me the acceptance and affirmation I was withholding from myself. This was a moment when the maxim, you can never love anybody if you are unable to love yourself, made clear sense. And I add, do not expect to receive the love from someone else you do not give to yourself. In closing, I want to share with you the words of the Reverend Darcy Lane. Our main job, both as a Unitarian Universalist community and as individual people, is to remember love whenever we can, whether it is available to be remembered or experienced. We remind each other of love not by logical arguments, but by being love by embodying and manifesting love, by grounding our actions, our choices, our words on that bedrock of love that underlays and supports everything. We remind ourselves and others that love is deeper, wider, stronger, and more enduring than the suffering and struggle of the moment. It provides us with a firm foundation from which to reach up and move forward, a driving force that helps us to keep moving when all around us is stuck in place, and motivation to keep putting one foot in front of the other when the object of our love is one who acknowledges and returns that love, or even when they don't. May your days ahead be filled with love, that which you generate and show for yourself and that which is shown to you. May they both fill up your love tank to overflowing and give you enough love to share. Thank you for your attention this morning. And now we're going to our, let me make sure here, our closing hymn, which is number six in the hymnal if you'd like to sing along and it's entitled just as long as i have breath
hearts are broken by our own failure or the failure of others cutting into our lives, even when we have done all we can and life is still broken, there is a universal love that has never broken faith with us and never will. Let us speak together our unison benediction in your order of service. Engage the world with, in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all beings. Please remain for our postlude and may your week ahead be filled with love. Thank you.